From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at Noon, streaming now. It is a big shift for Indiana, and it means more Hoosiers can now get the COVID-19 vaccine. The state is making the change immediately following a shift in federal vaccine guidelines. Good afternoon, I'm Lauren Casey. New this midday, access to the coronavirus vaccine is expanding across our state. It's based on a new directive from the state health department that comes one day after the new guidelines from the federal government. The health department says people who are ages 70 and older can now begin scheduling their appointments to receive the vaccine. Previously, those appointments had been reserved for Hoosiers 80 and older, as well as medical workers and first responders. This week, the federal government urged states to start giving the vaccine to slightly younger people. The vaccine is free, but you do have to schedule your appointment by calling 211 or by going online to ourshot.in.gov. The new coronavirus numbers are out, and the State Department of Health says they are mostly holding steady. The department says that more than 3,600 new cases of COVID-19 were reported today. 59 additional deaths are also being reported by the health department. That brings Indiana to 8,790 deaths since the pandemic began. The state is also updating the number of Hoosiers who have been vaccinated. So far, almost 220,000 Hoosiers have gotten at least the first dose of the vaccine. More than 40,000 people in Indiana have been fully vaccinated. And today, Governor Holcomb will have more to say about Indiana's vaccine rollout and the current state of the pandemic during his weekly media briefing. You can watch that live here at 2.30 this afternoon right here on WRTV. We also have it for you at WRTV.com and of course on our Facebook page. Let's get a check this midday of our forecast. We're halfway through the work week and Todd Clausen is standing by from his home with what we can expect. Hey Todd. Yeah, good afternoon there, Lauren. The sun was shining all morning long, and it's starting, unfortunately, to fade a little bit in spots. With that said, though, it's still a pretty nice day for us all across uh, central Indiana with temperatures that are going to be running above normal here this afternoon. A live look in Bloomington, and you can kind of see those high, thin clouds uh, starting to make their way back into the picture after what was a sun-filled morning for just about everybody. Temperature-wise, right now we are sitting in the 30s and 40s, so we've made the jump from 37 last hour uh, to 41 in Indianapolis. It's 42 right now in Bloomington, uh, 41 as well in Muncie. So here come the clouds. You can see them streaming into the area. Uh, they'll become a little thicker as the afternoon goes on, but you do not have to worry about any of that precipitation that you see off to the west in portions of Iowa. So this afternoon, decreasing sunshine, increasing cloud cover with temperatures that'll be in the low to mid 40s. And then this evening, temperatures will be hovering right around 40 degrees. We're we're dry today. Some rain arrives tomorrow. We're talking about some snow for the weekend, Lauren. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you so much. So one week after rioters who supported the president tried to take over the U.S. Capitol building, lawmakers are back there and they'll likely impeach the president this afternoon. That vote comes as thousands of National Guard troops are inside as security throughout the nation's capital has been boosted ahead of Joe Biden's inauguration set for next week. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the very latest. The House, now in session, set to impeach President Trump for a history-making second time. In just hours, lawmakers poised to vote on a single article, charging Donald Trump with incitement of insurrection by urging his supporters to march on the Capitol. We are debating this historic measure at an actual crime scene, and we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the president of the United States. At least five Republicans are now on record saying they'll vote to impeach. One of them telling CBS News more GOP members will join. This is one of these moments that transcends politics. Support for impeachment transcending the highest ranks of the Republican Party. Sources tell ABC News Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell believes the president committed impeachable offenses. And the number three Republican in the House, Liz Cheney, announced she'll vote to impeach, writing in a blistering statement, there's never been a greater betrayal by a president of the United States of his office and his oath to the Constitution. The president's support also waning outside Washington. In light of this criminal act, the city of New York has determined that it is within our power to terminate all contracts with the Trump organization. Federal authorities now say they're investigating significant felony cases tied to sedition and conspiracy in last week's attack. ABC News has learned an internal FBI bulletin warned that extremists were heading into Washington to wage war. And one online thread cited in the report stated, be ready to fight, raising yet more questions about why law enforcement was so unprepared. I think what happened was that somebody on the Hill, maybe the president, made a decision 
to make it soft. A source tells ABC News House Speaker Nancy Pelosi could send the impeachment article to the Senate next week, leaving the Senate no choice but to start a trial immediately. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, the Capitol. And during last week's riot on Capitol Hill, Indiana Congressman Andre Carson rode out the attack and barricaded in his own office. Carson spoke to our own Rafael Sanchez on why he plans to impeach the president today. I want to start with some developing news. The third highest ranking Republican, Liz Cheney, has indicated that she will vote for impeachment. Your reaction, sir? I'm proud that she, along with other Republicans, are taking a bold step uh, against Donald Trump, even though it's it's late, better late than never. And, you know, uh, Liz Cheney comes from a family who believes in the preservation of our democracy, and Donald Trump uh, has shown himself to be dedicated to uh, the dismantling of our democracy, unfortunately. How did you make sense of that the Capitol was under attack? Here you are in what is supposed to be the safest building uh, practically in the world. How did you just compute that and how did you sort of say what what's going on did you did you have a what's going on moment i was deeply concerned and as i watched out of my window i saw the insurrectionists uh i saw confederate flags uh, i heard expletives and i knew that this is very this was very very serious it told me that it was time for a reckoning within the Republican Party. And many of my colleagues who have expressed to me privately that they're embarrassed by Donald Trump's antics, that it's time for my colleagues to stand up and speak out and condemn this man. And, and now we're seeing a response from many Republicans who are standing up and I commend them, but we're also seeing a response from corporate America. And I think enough is enough. No other president has been impeached mm. twice in American history. What does that say about our country? My hope is that we will learn from this lesson and moving forward, the American people uh, will elect folks who have service in mind and people in mind and won't discriminate against one group over the other. And the congressman says he's also reviewing news involving an alleged rioter who was arrested and whom prosecutors say had congressman's name on a possible hit list. Well, they are looking ahead to what they hope is a normal school year this coming fall. Next, we'll take a closer look at how one local school district is showcasing to parents everything that they can offer their students. Todd. And Lauren, it's been a decent morning and it's turning into an above normal afternoon with finally some sunshine here across central Indiana. How long are these mild temperatures going to stick around and when can we see the return of some precipitation in the forecast? I'll have all the details for you coming up when the news at noon continues right here on WRTV. ABC's General Hospital. Welcome back. So Indianapolis Public Schools already looking ahead to the next school year and the district showcase of schools is underway this midday. Here's some video from last year's in-person event and of course today's event is all virtual due to the pandemic. Families can visit these virtual booths for each IPS school to learn a little bit more about their programs and extracurricular activities. You can also participate in live chats with school representatives. Carrie Black from IPS explained how it all works when she joined us this morning on Good Morning Indiana. So when you log into the program, it's going to look like this. And then you'll have a number of different schools, uh, more than our, our more than 76 schools, district departments, programs are all here on the page. You'll be able to click in on a program and look in and kind of learn a little bit about it. And then you can gather your questions. Here from 6 to 8 this evening, there will be live chat. So representatives from all of these schools will be available for you to ask your questions and dig a little deeper to learn about that program or that school. Well, the IPS showcase of schools continues until 9 o'clock tonight. Again, it's all virtual this year. You can find out how to navigate it all at the WRTV News app or go to WRTV.com. So it's based on a true story from the past, but it's relevant today and it may always be. Coming up, how you can see a local theater group bringing history to life starting next week. And let's take a live look outside right now. This is in Green Castle on the campus of DePaul University, where we do have sunny skies this midday over in that area. It is a nice sign to see after a lot of clouds the past week. Todd Klaus will say how long they'll stick around. We'll be right back here on the News at Noon. Stay with us. Get Stewart. 
So January usually means it's Girl Scout cookie time, but like a lot of organizations, the Scouts are making adjustments so girls can still sell their cookies in a safe way in this pandemic. Girl Scouts of Central Indiana are partnering with Grubhub. The food delivery platform is giving girls another way to make contact free cookie orders. Customers in Central Indiana beginning um, later in January will be able to order Girl Scout cookies with no delivery fee. Grubhub has waived that for this program. And so in our Grubhub markets, you can get your Thin Mints or your Samoas, which are my favorite also, <laughs> delivered right to your door. And we're also excited to announce that American Dairy has decided that the first set of customers from each Grubhub location um, will also maybe get some cold milk along with their cookies um, or some unique prize like that. So yeah, so we're super excited for this innovative partnership and girls are involved in the Grubhub. And so we always look at the skills girls are learning through this entrepreneurship program and Grubhub in, and just organization, organizations like that, you know, have their own back end, they have their own technology systems. So girls are learning that system. And so this is just another layer of ways in which they've expanded their horizon. So we're super excited about it. Well, Grubhub Girl Scout cookie sales start January 22nd. Beginning on February 19th, you'll see socially distant or contact-free in-person cookie booths at places like your local Kroger or Walmart store. And if you know a Girl Scout personally, you can actually start ordering online right now. So, Todd, I guess we just need to f meet a Girl Scout and we can get our orders in already. <laughs> Uh, I think I know a couple Girl Scouts that we could uh, order from. Uh, All right. So, uh, always, always uh, a good time of year when the Girl Scout cookies go come out and, of course, supporting a good cause as well. All right. It was nice to see the sunshine, Lauren, across the area. Yesterday it came out and still out here uh, this afternoon. Here's a live look for you in Greencastle. And you can see the clouds starting to increase a little bit across the area. Uh, but nonetheless, it should be a really nice afternoon by January standards for us as we continue to see our temperatures uh, run above normal. 41 right now in India as well as Muncie. 40 in Bloomington and Shelbyville. 39 is the current temperature in Kokomo. Highs today will be topping off anywhere from 40. 42 to about 46 degrees, depending on where you live. Keeping in mind that our normal high this time of year is right around 35 degrees, depending on where you live. So it's about 10 degrees above normal with sunshine. That's why I say by January standards, we're in pretty good shape. Here come the clouds. You see them filtering in. They're just the high clouds right now, but they'll thicken up a little bit here throughout the afternoon hours. But we don't have to worry about any precipitation. You see a little up here uh, near Minneapolis, uh, but that will not impact us here today. But there's a bigger storm system here out west, and that will start to impact us late tomorrow and then eventually into the weekend with one, a push of colder air, and two, some rain, and then eventually some snow showers across the area. And this evening, we're just fine, mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures will be in the 30s all across the area. In fact, with the cloud cover in place and still a little bit of a southwesterly wind, those temperatures will hold fairly steady. Tomorrow, we're still going to be in the mid-40s, not as much in the way of sunshine tomorrow. In fact, overall, your Thursday is going to be a mostly cloudy day for us. Late in the day on Thursday, we're talking about after sunset. I am expecting a band of rain to come through uh, with a quick burst of shower activity, but that'll be the leading edge of some colder air that's going to be moving in during the day on Friday and then eventually into the weekend. So as we go into the weekend, there's going to be an area of low pressure to our north, and it's basically just going to pinwheel some showers around our area in the counterclockwise direction. The low is going to be here, and it's going to bring the snow showers in uh, counterclockwise. It's not going to be snowing at all times, but there'll be some snow showers that'll be around Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and then off and on throughout the day on Saturday as well. And here are the colder temperatures that come in with it. You notice by Saturday and Sunday, we're looking at temperatures that are going to be back down to right around a freezing for your afternoon highs. We will not see major snow accumulation, uh, but as some of these snow showers come in, it'll be very windy as well. And that could reduce visibility on the roadways. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. And the roadways can get slickened up just a little bit, Lauren. Uh, not with a lot of snow, but enough, I think, to make them slick here across the area at times over the course of the weekend. All right, Todd, good to know. Thank you. Well, they've put on this play before, but given some recent events, the Actors Theater of Indiana believed that it needed to be shown again. The theater that's based out of the Center for Performing Arts up in Carmel will start streaming a play that's called Alabama Story starting next week. And I spoke with 
with the co-founder of the Actors Theater, Cynthia Collins, about why the show is still relevant now. Although things might be different in Indiana, we have our ways. People stay with their own kind. I think it's always timely, but um, what the country is going through right now it is, um, I think it's really, really important. And we all think it's very important. It's about, um, you know, it's about civil rights, equal rights, uh, the banning of books. Um, it, it's, it's a true story. It takes place in Montgomery, Alabama, 1959. Emily Reed is the librarian, the state librarian there at the Alabama State Library. And a book comes across her desk called The Rabbit's Wedding by Garth William. Anyway, it's about a black rabbit who marries a white rabbit. It's just a children's book, okay? Mm -hmm. but, um, but there's a senator, uh, Senator Higgins, has a fit and he says, this is, this is about black marrying white. The book needs to be banned. He goes as far to, as to say the book needs to be burned. And so it's a real head to head between the senator and Emily Reed. Mm -hmm. What do you hope people get out of this? It's obviously a theme that's just kind of been weaving itself through our society over uh, the course of years, and it seems to keep being something we're talking about. This this play is powerful. It's powerful for any time. But now I do hope people, if they didn't see it in our season, I do hope that they they do watch it because it really the message, you know, of um, you know of hate, uh, you know, of, of people being so ignorant. Um, and then you have the side of, you know, it's, it really is like almost like good and evil, you know, <laughs> and, and, and who will prevail. And, uh, and you still have this mindset uh, that was down in the South in 1959, that people still have this mindset today. We want to thank Cynthia Collins from the Actors Theater of Indiana for joining us today to talk about that. The streaming performance of Alabama Story premieres next Monday, which is Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, and it runs through February 14th. You can get tickets for the show online at the website on your screen. That's ATIStage.org. So next, they had a game to play, but two opposing teams came together before their matchup for a very special reason. It's a really heartwarming story from Johnson County, my hometown. We'll have that for you coming right up here on the News at Noon. Stick around. And instead of that story down in Johnson County, we have to make a change right now. On Capitol Hill, they are debating that article of impeachment against the president. It's getting underway Further, right now in the U.S. House. So let's go out there live the right now to Washington on a special report from ABC News. Who engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the United States from holding any office under the United States in his conduct while president of the United States and in violation of his constitutional oath faithfully to execute the office of the President of the United States and to the best of his ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States and in violation of his constitutional duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed, Donald John Trump engaged in high crimes and misdemeanors by inciting violence against the government of the United States and that on January 6, 2021, pursuant to the 12th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, the Vice President of the United States, the House of Representatives, and the Senate met at the United States Capitol for a joint session of Congress to count the votes of the Electoral College. In the months preceding the joint session, President Trump repeatedly issued false statements asserting that the presidential election results were the product of widespread fraud and should not be accepted by the American people or certified by state or federal officials. Shortly before the joint session commenced, President Trump addressed a crowd at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. There he reiterated false claims that we won this election and we won it by a landslide. He also willfully made statements that, in context, encouraged and foreseeably resulted in lawless action at the Capitol.